Today I'm turning my attention once more to my soon to be created 7S20P uh, lithium ion 18650 battery bank and uh, here's one of the packs these 20 cells will all be wired in parallel and there'll be another six of these blocks making up that 24 volt well a little bit higher than that uh, battery bank now i've been asked why i've changed these uh, 4x5 18650 holders rather than these flat uh, holders that i was using previously well the answer is pretty straightforward because if i put i don't know 10 of those in a row uh, well, that's taking up quite a bit of space, and if I complete the pack to make my 20p, well, as you can see, it's going to take up an awful lot more space than this block. Now, I could mount this on a wall or mount this on a bench, but unfortunately, it's whichever way I do it, it's going to take up more space than one of these. Now, this might be a little bit difficult to see, but this is the output from repacker.com. I've put in all the individual capacities of all my 18650s, and it's organised them into uh, seven packs. And as you can see down here, possibly um, each pack is just shy of 51 amp hours, which is pretty impressive, I think, for 20 cells. And... Uh, actually the only difference is one milliamp hour between all the different packs it's either uh, 50.964 or 50.963 these packs should hopefully be extremely well balanced now all the orange and peach cells you can see in front of you were taken from those hp laptop batteries that i bought from ebay in a job lot the eagle-eyed amongst you might notice a couple of these pink Samsung cells as well. There's one under there. And uh, those were actually in my original 7S4P um, lithium-ion pack. So these have seen quite a good life with me. And of course the orange ones have seen quite a good life with other people. But hopefully they've got quite a bit of life still within them. So now I've made up my packs, I need to think about how I'm going to wire them. And I make no bones about it, I think I'm going to steal Pete's idea over at HB Powerwall. And uh, simply put, you place a wire down here between these two cells and connect these two cells to that bus wire. It can uh, move across the bottom and then go all the way up this point here. And uh, the two wires connect at the top into a lug and that seems a really sensible solution to me um, so now i need to think about my wiring and i do have quite a bit of this it's 10 awg tinned copper i think there are 63 strands in there from the data sheet if i remember correctly um, and that seemed like a good solution that was until i uh, actually stripped some and it falls apart really quickly and really easily and i think that's going to become quite cumbersome quite quickly and i've got a fair bit of this twin and earth um, so this is a british colored twin and earth we've got a brown core in there for the live a uh, blue for the neutral and in the center there's an unshielded uh, un uh, earth connector now the uh, live and the neutral are both 2.5 mil and the uh, earth is actually 1.5 mil. So I've got quite a lot of this here in the shed. Um, so perhaps that's the best option. And here I have some of the 2.5 mil conductor here. There's four strands that are roughly twisted together. And if I spin this on my drill, well, I'm hoping that will make a decent bus bar that can go down there. Um, but getting those copper um, conductors out isn't too difficult. Let's uh, not slice myself open on camera. Um, isn't too difficult getting it out of the grey outer um, con uh, um, what am I saying? The grey outer insulation here isn't too difficult. Once you've got a, a bit of a length here, you can actually just pull these apart and uh, one will come out quite easily. See if I use some pliers, that comes out very easily indeed. No, but the issue I've had is getting the uh, 
copper out of its insulation here. That's quite a thick piece of insulation and uh, it takes an awfully long time trying to uh, cut bits out and oh, it's been really fiddly. I'm surprised I'm not covered in cuts. So after getting frustrated about taking the insulation off these cables, I decided to uh, come up with this. Well, I've got to be honest, I saw a design similar to this on Thingiverse, uh, but actually I did design my own. And I'm using here a, uh, what I'd call a Stanley knife blade, which sits in there quite well. And uh, it's at um, roughly a 10 degree angle. I did try five degrees originally, but that didn't really work for me. So uh, I chose 10 degrees and that seems to work quite well. So we shove the wire here down one of these holes and it takes a section of the insulation off without any real problem. And in fact, Yes, once you've got a bit through, you can grab some pliers and just pull. And uh, within a few seconds there, oh, it's got a bit twisted at the end, but within a few seconds, I've stripped, what, a metre of cable. And that just pops out no bother whatsoever. So I'll put a link to this file in the description below. Um, this has saved me an awful lot of time and of course it's also saved my fingers. So here I'm taking another idea that I first saw uh, from HP Powerwall uh, using a little jig here to uh, wind this wire around these nails and uh, make my bus bars. And if we imagine if I'll just twist those together a little bit obviously I'm doing this for the camera and I might spend a little bit more time doing it properly but my bus wires will uh, sit down the middle here of the two 18650s a fuse from each 18650 will go to the bus wire uh, both sides there and then of course these will connect together at the top and uh, I'll shove a ring terminal here, this is a 5mm M5 ring terminal and 8 AWG, so I'm not sure how many wires that will take in there uh, to fill it up. Um, four, five, uh, well I might be able to get six in there, which would mean I could have uh, three conductors down each side. That might work quite well. So once my bus bar is placed in this sort of arrangement, I think I will use some of this 5 amp fuse wire that I've used before on my previous packs uh, to wire from the cell to the bus bar. Now, uh, I will probably solder that on. I don't have a spot welder. I'm not sure I can come up with one on the cheap as it were and actually even if I did this wire is so thin I just don't think I could spot weld that reliably onto the cell so I think I'll be soldering and uh, you will notice that I've left the uh, tabbing wire on a lot of these cells most of these cells all my orange and uh, peach cells still have quite a bit of the uh, tabbing wire left on them and uh, I just thought it might be interesting to see if uh, that solders more easily than these uh, cells here that haven't got that anymore. Um, I just had it in my head that it might be a little bit easier to solder if the uh, tabbing wire was left but um, I guess we'll find out. Now I don't intend to make videos about making all these packs, I think that could be a little bit dull but if you really want to see it let me know in the comments below. Now I might be guilty of a mistake here but previously I thought the bigger the packs that you create uh, the less likely you are going to need some sort of battery management system. Or should I say the less likely you're going to need to balance the packs. As you saw earlier, the Repacker website has created these two packs here and they are only one milliamp hour difference between them. Now, to my mind, that means they should charge and discharge very evenly and hopefully they should hold their voltage similar to each other uh, pretty well. However, let me show you something. In my last video about this 7S pack, I expanded it from four cells in parallel to eight cells in parallel. And uh, ever since making that video, this has been working really well. However, I have to make an admission. 
A couple of months ago I took out the capacity controller uh, to test this ISDT BG8S uh, balancer um, for a couple of days. And uh, anyway, it wasn't for me and I put the uh, capacity controller back into circuit but I made a mistake. I forgot to turn it on to balance mode again. So as you can see, it's showing that the whole pack at the moment is 27.13 volts. But as I beep here through the cells, we've got 3.75, uh, 3.80, 3.82, 3.83, 3 3.95, 3.96, 3.98. So we've got just under 4 volts at the top. And you'll notice that the uh, first cell is the lowest and the, uh, the last cell is actually the highest. So I think that pretty much destroys my theory that the bigger the packs, the less likely you are to need to balance them. So I am definitely going to have to look at a solution. So I think I need to find a BMS solution with a bit more grunt here than the capacity controller. And thanks to Colin Hickey who pointed me out to a project, um, I think I might have found one. So I've been buying some bits over the last few weeks and in my next video about this project, I think we'll start looking at that. So I hope you'll join me for that video and hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Oh, that is so satisfying.